Massive price cuts have gone global. The competition is terrified. Or at least they should be. If they're not, what are they doing? I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Yeah, so we're uh, on the, the live show. The Friday live show. Or maybe it's a condensed one over the weekend. So, uh, don't know if you heard. Look at that. Tesla cuts prices for the 3 and Y across Europe. Big cuts. Norway, Germany, France, Netherlands, UK. This was after big cuts in Asia and Oceania last week. And uh, cuts, you know, in, in, in US, in the US too. What does it mean? Well, first, let's look at the price. It was going up, 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 and back down. Thank you, Tesla, here for the wonderful graph. Oh, but why don't we zoom out and go back? Yeah, there's the Model 3. Started so high. Those were ambitious days. Got down to a low of 55000 We're basically right back there. So I wouldn't say that uh, prices are spiraling. I would say they're reverting to average. Do you know that uh, the software options are excluded from the software from the price cap? So if you want to get enhanced autopilot or full self-driving, you can do that. I don't know why anyone is buying full self-driving though, because it's fifteen thousand, and if it's two hundred bucks a month, assuming they don't change the price, which <laughs> they may, that's seventy-five months, isn't it? Are you going to keep it for seventy-five months? A lot of people don't. I don't know. It's a gamble. The nice thing about doing 200 bucks a month rather than 15,000 is Tesla can count all of it in the month it's received rather than deferring some of it. Because when the month expires, it's expired. So today we're talking about some cars. Now there's going to be a lot on this list that aren't here yet. A lot of folks have cars that uh, have not completed this process. But let's start with the Mach-E, which has a price cap of 55000 that covers a lot of their models. Tesla, all their vehicles are on the list at various prices. Just about, nay, all of them now qualify, right? And uh, the Volkswagen. Everybody else, get your lists sorted out. So in the design studio, you can see Model Y is now 52990 and that's before the $7,500 discount. So that's going to make it a lot harder <laughs> for the competition to, you know, you could have said yesterday, day before, well, Teslas are a little bit more expensive. There are other cars that are almost as good and they are cheaper. That time may have passed. Looking at some of the specs here, I'm just looking at like the acceleration and the range and whatnot. Because I'm going to make some comparisons. Here's the ID4. Just making some comparisons because we're going to go to a chart here. So the Model Y, 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. This first chart is cheap. The cheapest you can get from these brands. 52,990 after credit. Gives you a monthly payment, a 753. That's assuming 10,000 down or a trade worth 10,000. 6% interest, 72 month loan and just paying a lot of the costs out of pocket. You can get a much slower Mach-E for a little bit less money. You can get a slower-ish Kia EV6 for more money. And an ID4, you can get a real, real base one that is slow for a decent price. Now we could step that up. And I've got all these here. I looked at the different prices. I shot right around the 55000 mark. Because if they're a couple bucks over, they're probably going to adjust it. The Mach-E Select. Is this a real car? I'm not sure. And then um, I use the, these are the interest rates on a 72 month, 6% seemed pretty common. So yeah, if we're looking apples to apples, where we're getting cars that are about 45-ish after all your discounts, you get some different choices here. Best range, that's Tesla. There's other differences between these cars that you may know about. Do you know that only one of these on the list really has over the air updates in any practical sense? A lot of these are only two-wheel drive cars. The Tesla's not. It's an all-wheel drive. The driver assist features, the technology suite. A lot of these cars really want you to pay a lot of extra money to get things that I think they should just include. Which would you rather have? A slower car with worse charging 
two-wheel drive instead of all-wheel drive. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, man. You could say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get the, the EV6. The EV6 is nice and quick, super quick, this GT 3.3. If that's correct, man, that's a fast car. That wins. That's a good one. But the range, 249, you can say, I'm going to pay 50 bucks a month extra to get the EV6 because I want that extra little bit of boost and don't want to buy a, a premium, a, a performance model. But you could say, you know what? I'm standing up to Twitter man bad. Now, I'm not a fan of Twitter, <laughs> just, just like generally. Wasn't before, still has not changed. Um, but I would say, if you can get a much better car for the same price or a bit less, this is the lowest payment of these four cars. The supercharging network alone, the charging speed alone. And these guys can and probably will lower their prices because they have to. They're not making money on these cars, not yet. They're subsidizing their losses with their internal combustion sales. And if they keep doing that, hopefully they're selling enough that they don't have to keep buying ZEV credits from Tesla. But here's the other thing. There's a lot of efficiencies that are going to go into this. Efficiencies in price, efficiencies in the cost of the Teslas on the back end. We know it is profitable to sell a Model Y at prices like we have seen back here at these prices, the Model Y was profitable. They were making money. Now, inflation has cut into that a bit, but they were only making them in their least efficient factory, Fremont. Well, Shanghai is more efficient still. Uh, they've added more mega castings to make the vehicle even simpler to build. Even when the Model Y first came out, Sandy Monroe from Monroe & Associates said, this car is cheaper to build than the Model 3. So we've got all those efficiencies. We've got new factories that are, in Tesla's scheme, third or fourth generation. It's beautiful. They've got the margin. They've got the efficiency. And they've got their own battery production. Giga Nevada is a U.S. domestic battery maker, as defined by the Inflation Reduction Act. Well, maybe it isn't reducing inflation since it just cut the cost of your cars quite a bit. And a car is a big expense. The factory makes, what, 40 gigawatt hours a year? It's churning something like one and a half to two and a half billion dollars in back end credits for U.S. domestic battery manufacturing. So even if these cars were sold at an absolute break even, for every one you sell, there's a, a ton of money on the back in batteries, in battery credits coming back. That's crazy. And all these cars are an investment in the future. They're gonna be they're gonna be self-driving at some point. And when they are, that's a switch that's gonna flip, and we're looking at a trillion dollars in revenue coming in all the time. More units on the road, the more it goes. So they've got efficiencies. They can, the money is there. And if this doesn't make the competition scared, the competition ain't paying attention. But did you know it's not just the three and Y that got cheaper? No, the S and X did as well. The Model S Plaid is down to 115, 21,000 less than it was. The Model S Plaid is very fast, and it's pretty darn comfortable. I haven't been in the S Plaid. I've been in the Refreshed X. Jeff knows about that. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's even on long drives. It's fine. It's great. It, the sound is good. The view out the window is marvelous. It's a great car. So who's buying the Plaid S, this car that does 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds? Bad news, it's probably these folks. Look at this, 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. That's a pretty hot car. 0 to 60 in 2.6 seconds. 
179. Oh, my eyes are watering. Oh, it's so spicy. It's a pretty car. If you can fit in the door hole, which I can, I guess. My head kind of bonks on the sill. Not super excited about that. Sill, now you know what I mean. The, the door, the door hole. That's the scientific term. It is, are you going to buy? <laughs> and 2.6 seconds, that's great. It is fast, you know. Kind of, kind of like a Kia EV6. I mean, which would you rather have? The Lucid or a Plaid Model S and a Kia EV6? Lucid has got to be scared. They've got, they've got every right. The only way they're beating here is on the 446 miles. Now, they've got the Sapphire coming out, which 0 to 60 in 1.9. In a quarter mile, we've seen some drag races on YouTube. It can beat the Plaid. Barely. Not by much. Does the Sapphire actually exist? It's not very available. And do you really need to go any faster? I don't think Tesla's going to uncork the Plaid to go faster. They probably could. I think they're going to wait and make the Roadster the fastest which is probably going to be about a year and a half out, would be my guess. So we're going to go into some questions. <laughs> the Q&A. For those of you just tuning in, for those of you not familiar with the channel, the Q&A, we do the whole thing. We go into it, we do the Q&A hole, and we answer questions. So let's see. And this makes it an everyman car. Last year, the average price of a new car was something like 45000 this gets it within range of that. And for that matter, let's look at the Model 3. What is the price of it now? It is $43,990. You whack $7,500 off that, and you're talking $36,500? That's your $35,000 Model 3 right there, isn't it? That's the fabled car. But it's not a limited trim, limited range, limited everything. It's the real Model 3 for $36,500. Adjusted for inflation, that's below the 35000 that you were promised. That's a good deal. If you can fit in a car that holds five, that's a good deal. You're out the door at thirty-six grand on a car that costs you five bucks to fill up, that has no maintenance, that doesn't blow a head casket, or need an oil change, which I had to do today. These are everyman cars once again. How do I feel? about? I'm excited. I'm excited. They've got the margin. Uh, you know, well, but this means demand has ended. Demand is down for all cars everywhere. In 2016, China peaked at, I say, I think 27 million units, 27 passenger million passenger vehicles sold. Last year, they sold 21 million. And it's been down steadily since 2017, even before the pandemic. Passenger vehicle sales are down. Meanwhile, during some of those years, Tesla's been growing in China. So there is, and interest rates are higher. You know, we're seeing on my chart, I showed 6% interest on these. I mean, but look at that, an ID4 for 550 a month with only 10,000 down. That's not bad. But all these cars, yeah, we're talking 6% interest. It was a year ago, you could get 2 3% interest. Interest rates have gone up. That cuts into your buying power. So if the objective of the Inflation Reduction Act is to make stuff cheaper, a whole bunch of cars did just get cheaper. Not just because there's some federal money coming your way, but because the manufacturers are lowering the costs to give you a better car for less money. So all that's very exciting. Greenpad points out additional economies of scale are incoming. Yes, not just because they're making more, but because as the competition falters, that glass supplier, that brake supplier, that tire supplier wants to sell to someone, they're going to sell to you. And they're not going to be able to premium price you because they're short on supplies. They're going to sell it to you at the most competitive rate because they need to move the units or you'll buy them from someone else. 
I'm going to say uh, thanks real quick to my patrons and all that good stuff. A couple names I need to update on here. Um, well, uh, there it is, and uh, there you go. If you want to watch the complete 30-ish minute version, head on over to the second channel, uh, My Tesla Live, where the uh, whole thing goes out each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, join in the conversation. Thanks, as always, to everyone else. Like, subscribe, do the usual thing, and stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the live channel. Do I think spice sales will spike tremendously after the price reduction? So first of all, I'm furious about the price reductions. How dare they? Marketing 101, you don't take a third off the price. You run a promo, buy two, get one free. Because <laughs> that would help not regular people. It's a joke. It's a joke.